Welcome back, compadres. Today we're talking decline curve analysis, so we're building on what we learned previously. Last time we talked about rate time decline. Today we're talking about rate cum decline. We'll explain the pros and cons of that and uh, actually go through an Excel example using real production data. So let's get started. Okay, guys, today we're going to determine the remaining reserves and estimated ultimate recovery of the well using rate cum decline. We're going to use the same data we did previously with rate time decline, just a different decline analysis. So this graph right here represents a rate versus cumulative production graph. And you can see the data is plotted right here, the blue circles. And so you have rate on the y-axis and cumulative production on the x-axis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to forecast to an economic limit and determine the EUR and re the remaining reserves left to produce. So the key concepts I want you to think about as we go through this is pretty much the same we, we did in rate time decline. The ARPS rate equations, we're using it again. It's showing up. We're just going to change it up a little bit, rearrange the equations to suit this analysis. Also minimizing the sum of relative absolute errors so that we can match our data right here, get a good match, get a good fit. And then also reserves in EUR. I mean, this is the bread and butter of what we're trying to get today. So before we go into the Excel analysis, it's a good warm up to understand some theory. So essentially in rate cum decline, we're using four equations, but in actuality, <laughs> we're using two equations, just they're rearranged to solve for different variables. So this is the original ARPS equations for cumulative production as a function of rate. And this is the exact same equations we saw in rate time decline. Uh, we're going to use these here. So what we do is we rearrange this so that we have our y variable as our rate and our x variable as our cumulative production. So if we rearrange this in terms of rate, we end up with these two equations. That's all it is, man. It's just algebra. Pretty simple. Okay. We're really going to use this. These are the two equations we're going to use to create our fit. Okay. And more than likely, like I said, um, this is harmonic decline when B equals 1. Uh, we will more than likely not see this case but I'm going to program the logic anyways and so if you look over here at the graph this is a rate cumulative production graph what you do is the same steps you minimize the sum of relative errors to fit your production data and you're using these two equations right here to do that and then once you've done that you're going to pick your last point which is going to be at the economic rate and that's going to if you drop down to the x-axis that's going to be your cube production to the uh, economic limit so this is your EUR okay and so previously in rate time decline the area under the curve was going to be your cumulative production but since we have cumulative production on the x-axis here it's a lot more convenient to get EUR so we'll get EUR first, and we get this with one of these two equations. More than likely, it's going to be this one. And so we just put in our economic rate in for Q, and we get our EUR. This becomes EUR right here. And so in order to get reserves, what you have to do is take your last data point, which is going to be your cumulative production up to this instance in time, and you're going to take the EUR subtract that value and you get reserves so it's this is actually a lot easier to do than rate time decline I mean here's your equation if you want to calculate reserves but it's just it's real simple it should make sense so the steps are going to go through to forecast and determine our EUR is the following um, it's three steps I, I mean that's the best I could do for you guys. Um, I'm not going to go through them right now. Pause the video if, if you want to. I would highly suggest you read through this and understand this. And uh, these are the steps for calculating reserves using rate cum decline. And so as we 
before we get into it, let's realize the pros and cons of rate cum decline. Well, we're going to have some, some cons are it's going to neglect flow regime changes, and this is going to lead uh, your analysis to overestimate reserves. But it won't be as bad as rate time decline because it's not affected by shut-ins. So if I shut in the well, every the curve stops. I mean, my gas produced up to that point, it doesn't change, whereas in rate time decline, you know, my time will continue to move forward even when the well shut in and my area under the curve gets larger in that case and overestimates the reserves. So this should be an overall better estimate of reserves using rate cum decline. And uh, so that's really the, the advantages of a rate time decline, but we still have some cons. Okay, so rate cum decline ignores flow regime changes. That's the big point now. Um, I've kind of uh, preached my point here. Let's go ahead and start the analysis. Okay, so here we go. We're doing our rate cum analysis for the same data we used previously in our rate time forecast. This is going to be pretty similar to what we did in rate time. So we'll kind of speed through this a little bit faster. But before we get started, I want to show you the code that we're using. And so this is coming from slide number two, the bottom two equations where we calculate the ARPS rate from the cum. It's just the rate time equations rearranged for harmonic and hyperbolic decline. So this is kind of the main function. It's taking in your initial rate, initial decline, B exponent, and cumulative production. And you're calculating a rate based on what the B value is. So when B equals 1, you have harmonic decline. And so you'll calculate rate using the harmonic rate versus cum. And so it'll call this function right here. You should s be familiar with this. It's in slide number two. If b is not equal to one, then you have hyperbolic decline. And so this is that equation right here, coded in Excel VBA. So this is kind of our bread and butter of our analysis. And so this is our production data plotted on a cumulative production versus monthly rate. Or actually, it'll be daily rate. This should be daily. And so what I've done here is I've already created columns right here that you calculate rate. And so we're going to use our function, our rate from cum, and it's going to take our qi. And you want to make these, you want to freeze these, initial decline, b exponent, and our cumulative production, which is coming from our data. And so we're starting at zero. So that's going to be our initial rate, which is the same as what we have put in this cell right here. So that makes sense. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry this down to the last data point of our data, which is going to happen at 70. So I went one too low. There we go. So now we have this data, our ARPS equation, plotted right here. And so now we're going to calculate our absolute relative error because we'll need to reduce the sum of errors right here. And so I'm going to start at the second data point because we have zero as our, as our first actual cumulative production or actual rate. We don't have it here. So it's going to be the absolute value. With this is the same stuff we did previously. The absolute value of our actual rate minus the predicted rate divided by our actual rate. And so there we go. That's our relative absolute relative error. I'm going to carry that all the way through to the bottom. And so now we have a sum of errors. But before we optimize this or reduce the sum of errors, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to forecast off this last off the end of this last data point. And so what I did was I since we're plotting cumulative production versus the rate, I'm going to take our last data point in this column, which is going to be our max cumulative production. So the max of the cumulative production in here is our last point. 
and so that's our that's where we're starting our forecast and then what I've done here is I've just carried it forward in time a little bit multiplied it by 1.08 that's just that you can change this and I've extended it out and so now I'm gonna do calculate our rate so I can plot this it's actually gonna be ARPS rate from QM the same function we use down here it's gonna take QI freeze those DI B and then our cumulative production and so bang so the red line right here is our forecast from our last data point so now we can use solver to try to fit to our data as best we can so we're going to reduce the sum of errors minimize the sum of errors and so the objective is th the sum of errors right there I'm going to minimize that by changing QI, DI, and B and you can see here what you probably want to do beforehand if, if you have other data is get it pretty close to where you want it to be uh, here I'm comfortable with doing this analysis as it is I think the solver will pick it up so I press solve and check it out so that looks like a great fit through our data and you can see here nobody would argue with that that's a good fit for rate cum decline and so so the next thing we want to do from our analysis is calculate our EUR and so our EUR is is what we're after in this and you can remember if you recall from the presentation EUR is easy to get from this graph because it's already on the x-axis we take the rate of our economic limit and we just run it over until we intersect our line right here and then we drop down to our x-axis and we have our EUR so this is this is the same graph right here these two are identical and so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to do ARPS rate from QM actually we're going to do our cumulative this is a equation we used previously um, in a rate time forecast so you may want to go look at that but I'll post the code on our uh, on my website but it's on this equation is on that second slide um, it's actually one of the top two equations it uses that logic and so what we need is we need QI DI the B exponent and then our economic rate so Q in this case will be our economic rate which is going to be 30,000 cubic feet per day and so bang that's our EUR right there and the way we get reserves is we just take our EUR and we subtract our cumulative production up to this point so this is what we get right here so there we have it guys that was rate cum decline and you can see if you compare these values this number should be slightly less than our rate time and in this case it is it can vary depending on how well how long the well is shut in obviously if the well is shut in longer the difference between our EURs will get bigger and so this well must have not have been shut in very long because these numbers are nearly identical for reserves and EUR but once again rate cum forecast is the way to go um, rate time is just there's a lot more error tied to it because of the time factor and rate cum is not affected by time but I want to emphasize that this analysis is very basic and every petroleum engineer should be familiar with it but the reason I wanted to go through this is because it's a building block for the more complicated analysis and you're gonna realize as we go forward that I'm gonna use equations from rate time 
and rate Hume to do a more complicated decline curve analysis. That's going to give us even better results and it's going to allow us to do reservoir characterization as well. So um, I know this is pretty rudimentary, but it's important to understand this. This is the building blocks for the more complicated analyses and you really need to be familiar with this. So guys, I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please subscribe. And um, I hope, uh, you know, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.